Well, what I've got here is the front section of a Caterpillar D400E Series 2 six-wheel drive articulated haul truck. D400 is a 40-ton capacity haul truck. And if you're not familiar, just search up Cat D400E and you'll be able to look at all the pictures you want to of what it would look like if it were a complete truck. So this is just the front section. It is a complete front section, meaning it's got the engine, transmission, torque converter, everything's there. The guy actually had two of these, and I would have bought them both, but he'd already sold one. He thought one of them had transmission problems and one of them had hydraulic pump problems. I don't know which one I got. I'm just assuming this one's going to be the one with the bad transmission. But it's all there. Looks like the air cleaner was changed from 5 1 to 17, so about four years ago. So I don't know exactly how long this truck's been out of service, but uh, obviously hasn't been more than four years. I haven't found any rods or anything hanging out of the block. He said he thought the engine was good, so I think I'll see if I can't get it fired up. Gonna have to get some batteries in there. Got those over there on the charger right now. It's got a 9AP prefix. 3406E in it. A 9AP prefix is a machinery application engine. It's not rated 660. These are like 405 at the flywheel, I think. There's a couple hydraulic pumps there. And then that big unit over there below them. It's probably hard to tell from where you're at, but that's the torque converter. It's being driven right off the engine flywheel there. And uh, I believe these all also have a hydraulic retarder. And then there's a little short drive shaft coming off that going back to the power shift transmission, which is back there. I think I can show you that better right here. So that big box right there, that's the transmission. See if it's got any cooling in it. Oh yeah, looks good. Alright, what about fuel? Yeah, looks like it's got lots of fuel in it. Okay, well, let's pull a valve cover and all right, I've got a valve cover off of it. Looks pretty good in there. It's got jake brakes on it, just like most on highway application 3406Es do. That's what that unit right there is, if you're not familiar. So it's got jake brakes in addition to a retarder. And uh, you need all that because this is a 70,000 pound truck when it's empty. And then it's a 40 ton truck, so that's another 80,000 pounds of payload. So fully loaded, that's a 150,000 pound unit. And you need all that retarding force to keep her under control, especially if you're working in some steep ground. Look at all the safety. Mostly I just don't trust these busted ass blocks to uh, keep me from getting smashed to death. But the problem that I've got right now is that there's a fitting right there that got knocked off when they loaded it or during shipping or something. And it dumped all the engine oil out. So I'm gonna have to see what it takes to get that plugged so I can fill it back up with oil and it'll stay in there. I've got some batteries on it. I don't know if they're gonna be good enough or not, but we'll find out. I've already pumped the hand primer and it seems to be primed up, so. Shouldn't have any trouble with that. Let's 
See what happens when we turn the key. Gauge cluster seems to be working. Showing 19,190 hours. I'm gonna go grab my laptop and we'll plug into it with Cat ET and see what else we can learn. If that data link even works. So you can see there rated power is 426 horsepower at 2000 RPM. Uh, 1488 foot pounds of torque at 1200 so not really asking much out of a 3406e really not compared to what we do with truck engines this thing's showing miles now i don't know how i switched it but showing 73,984 miles well as you can see my uh makeshift plug job there didn't work very well she's leaking so i'm going to end up having to take this hose off the oil pan and plug the hole in the oil pan didn't want to do that but there ain't going to be no other way got to get the oil to stay in it somehow while i'm under here that's what the front axle looks like She's pretty heavy duty. It is a suspended axle too. All right, I've got that hose disconnected from the oil pan. Got the fitting out of the oil pan and I've got a proper plug in it now. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can probably guess how much fun all that was by looking at this, but it's done now, so I got it full of oil and it's not leaking. Should be ready to try to start it. Let's check out this air cleaner that this old boy says he cleaned four years ago before we go any further here. Yeah, it looks all right. We'll just leave that outer filter out of there and start it up like that. 6.3 is 16 on that one. Okay, let's see what she does. If those batteries are any good, it probably will start. All right, last try for today. It's getting dark. Re-rig my batteries again there. Change the connections around a little bit. Nope. Well, it's the next morning. I've had these batteries on the charger all night, so hopefully I'll have a little bit better luck with them today. Before I forget, I've got something in here I'll show you real quick. I got both rear differentials with it too. So that's the rear rear. That's the drive line that runs in between the two, and then that's the front rear. You can see the pinion gear down in there. And then that's the differential lock clutch pack. 
This one's got one too. And the front axle has one also. You can actually lock all six all the way up in these trucks. Some pretty good size units. This is some pretty high level engineering right here. Only did a little bit of unintentional welding when I was hooking this all up. So that wasn't bad, but unfortunately when the unintentional welding began, it also completely <laughs> both terminals on this end of the batteries. So what we've got here is a chisel holding the battery cable down to the battery terminal in between the battery nut and the cable end itself. And then of course we're just using the standard vice grips on the negative end and the positive end here. That should be just fine. So if this doesn't work, which I can't imagine why it wouldn't, I'm gonna quit screwing around, go steal the batteries off that backhoe. All right, let's see what we get this time. Backhoe batteries are on as promised. Let's see what happens now. Hmm. Must not be the batteries. It's cable or something. Plenty of ether. Alright, there's been a whole lot of screwing around that's gone on here and not real sure how much of it's gonna make it into the video and how much is not going to, but I've tried three different battery setups so far. Those, those, and those, and they've all three produced pretty much the same results. So Came to the conclusion that the problem was not my batteries. The problem was not the rigging that I had done on the battery cables. I think all that was sufficient all three times. I believe there's a problem in, uh, well, let me just show you. It's up underneath here. So you've got the two main cables coming out here that go to the batteries. And they run through that uh, wall right there. They come through that piece of plate. Well, you can see them right here coming out of the battery box, going through. And then they come back and they run to this mess of garbage here. So, <clears throat> pretty sure that uh, somewhere in all of that jumbled up mess, there's either a bad connection or a bad spot in one of the cables or something like that. So, what I've done now, I've got I've got it rigged up 24 volt up there out of the battery box just like it should be but then I've also run two more cables up here directly to the post on the starter and I'm feeding 24 volts directly to the starter through those cables from those two batteries there so we've got the 24 volt feed that's just like it should be even though we've apparently got a problem i'm just going to leave that like that because it was kind of working and then i've got an additional 24 volts coming straight to the starter from here you ready
gosh, damn, you should see the oil. Holy shit. All right, we gotta we gotta get into cleanup mode now. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, whichever hydraulic pump it is that feeds that hose right there, there ain't nothing wrong with that one. Hydraulic tank appears to be empty, and uh, I just kind of assumed that it was, but apparently there's still some oil in the bottom of it down there somewhere. But that's all right. We got her contained. No big deal. That's the second five-gallon bucket I've picked up. And there might be one more there, but I'll get her cleaned up, so... There's you a will it start video on half of a cat 40 ton haul truck. I guess that's all I've got. I'll see you next time.